Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the inside of this mouse and replacing the switches into silent switches, as you can see, clicky. But if you're in an office environment and you want silent, I recommend you replacing the switches inside your mouse. The first step you want to do is find the mouse screw that holds the shell in place. It might be under your mouse feet or like under some sticker somewhere. Keep in mind that if you do this, you might have a chance of voiding your warranty, so beware. Um, in this case, mine was just under this uh, warranty sticker. I teared it off, who cares? I mean, yeah, just wanted to show you guys this tutorial. The screw is normally a Phillip, uh, Phillips head screwdriver, just a normal one, but some mouses might have torque security or pencil oval or some special screw. In this case, you need a specialized screwdriver set, but like 99% of the mouses, they only have Phillips head screws, so just unscrew this. Your mouse might have um, more than one screw, but in case mine only has one. Um, your mouse also might have latches that you need to get out by clicking either a guitar pick or credit card and just weave your way in the edges here to get the latches off. So you see there's like latches where you have to get off to open the mouse. Now that you have access to the mouse's PCB uh, slash motherboard, you want to remove this motherboard out, taking very careful not to break or rip the cable. Your PCB might have uh, screws attached to the shell, so and do them if you want to get the shell off. Um, in this case, you can see there's one, two, three switches. Only three switches, no side buttons. Also, on some Logitech mouse, they have um, separate daughter boards that come off to hold the side button switches. You want to disconnect those, and those daughter boards make it really easy to sw switch switches, as if you fail, you can just get a replacement. But in this case, all my switches are soldered onto the main motherboard, so it's going to be riskier if all your switches are on this one board. For the materials you need, it's highly recommended you have a handy hands which is this tool with two clasps that you can hold while you're soldering. So you don't have to hold the board yourself. This prevents you burning yourself and it's highly recommended, especially if you have daughter boards where the switches go, because you can just hold the daughter boards up and not worry ha about having to drop them. You also need the switches. In this case, I have Kilo. I'm not sure how to pronounce them, but the, the Kilo silent switches. I'll provide a link to them in the description below. I've got them from AliExpress. They're pretty cheap. Um, but the shipping times may be longer due to COVID. You also have your main motherboard, your soldering iron. In this case, this is not a temperature adjustable. It's just a budget one that I got from the local hardware store. And you need desoldering braid or a desoldering pump. Um, I've seen people use uh, desoldering pumps, but I don't have one. I just have a braid. This is just copper that sucks solder. It's recommended to get size three and above because I've gotten size one before, it's really thin, so it made it really difficult. You also need like a sponge or something to just dab your dirty solder on, uh, rosin, resin core solder. So this is just simple electronic solder. Before we get into this switch replacement tutorial, it's highly recommended you practice your soldering skills on like a, a dead board or a donor board. In my case, I've like just desoldered and soldered on random components just so you don't mess up your main mouse. Lastly, it is also recommended that you solder in a highly ventilated area like outside or anything to ventilate the smell. I also have a new mat now. This is an anti-soldering, uh, anti-static pad used for soldering. Mind the fan noise, I have some ventilation going on. So you just want to grasp this with the alligator heads. Now that it's in place, you can grab your solder. I'm setting my solder to high because I want it to melt faster. You can also apply flux, a bit of flux to the motherboard just to make the process of heat transfer easier. Okay, so the first step you wanna do is pre-tin your solder because this um, makes the heat transfer easier. If your solder is oxi oxidized, you wanna tin it first by just rubbing the solder bright solder onto the tip until the tip turns silver and then see how here there's two pins um i'll zoom in see how these two these two are the switch pins and you might have one pin that isn't um 
soldered on. So you, you don't have to touch that. You just want to take your solder braid and your solder. And then gently. And there you have it. It's all out. Repeat the same for the second one. Put the solder braid directly on top of it. Yeah, got it off now. So after you just it a bit, just with these holes, with these holes, get a pair of tweezers and like insert into the hole and just pull it out while you're melting the solder. Because the melted solder doesn't attach to anything, you can just pull it out. So repeating the same thing for the other switch, tin it, re-tin it. After you desoldered some, get the tweezers and pull them. Pull them out while it's soldering. I'll show you here. I just, just pull it out while you're melting the solder. See? That's the desoldering process done. Now you need switches and re-solder them onto this board. Now what you want to do so do not put the switches on like that. If you do this and then solder them on, they're gonna be on backwards. So what you wanna do is you wanna flip the board once it cool down onto the other position. So insert these here. Because these are two pin switches, it doesn't matter what, what orientation you put them. But in case if you wanna uh, solder on these three pin switches, um, there should be a diagram where the little triangle switch goes like this and just align them But in my case, I only have two pin switches. It doesn't really matter You only have to solder it on this side because that's where the main switch goes So I ran into a bit of a problem I had to desolder these holes more and open them wider because my pins were too thick to go through the holes But now they fit just fine So you can see they fit perfectly fine. So you might have to desolder some more and just remove the excess solder. Once they're on, they should be stuck there without having to fall out upside down. So you can do the same thing and put them up on your handy hands and re-solder. So repeat the same process again. Just turn on your solder and re-tin it. You can see it's smoking. And now, instead of having a desoldering braid, put your solder up against it and then Gently feed the soldering in, solder in, and as you can see, this is a, this wasn't a good one, but there should be a blob where it goes. Repeat the same for the next one. It's pretty easy. It shouldn't take long, and you can always remove the excess solder with a desoldering braid or just repeat again with a desoldering pump. Do the same for the other side. No. You can then remove the access solder with a desoldering braid. Now you can see this one's completed. We can do all the rest. And you're done. Just unclip it from the alligator clips. Make sure they're on there. Sometimes they can be just a millimeter out and you won't get, you, it won't fit onto the switch. So you're gonna have to resolder again. Just check if there's like a gap between. In my case, I did it, it, there was no gap, so I'm fine. And just reassemble into the mouse. Get the original mouse shell, make sure this is um, the right way. And then, oh no, got to put my scroll wheel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If your scroll wheel falls out, just put it back into the encoder. Like feed it through the rod inside here. It should turn. Put it back in. Rewire the USB cable. It's always a good idea to take a picture before you um, fully disassemble just to see where everything goes. And then get the original mouse shell latched in. Make sure that there's a sensor and then get the original mouse screw here. And you can see the difference. There's no clicks now. This was the original mouse click. This was the new mouse click. So I didn't bother to replace the scroll wheel because I know I won't be using it 
as often. You can just pick which switches you want to replace. Um, I replaced the two mouse buttons because those are the ones I use the most. These switches are actually pretty crisp and silent at the same time, so I really recommend it. It's silent while still having decent um, click response times, and it actually gives feedback unlike other silent switches, so these silent switches are top notch. Here's a sound test again. As you can see, the mouse works fine. You can go on YouTube, you can tap here. Oh, 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 it's fine. Clicks are a bit sensitive, but I prefer that. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. I'll be doing more mouse videos and mouse tutorials for you. Mm-hmm.